Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey guys, welcome into another episode of Dodgers Rap 360 right here on AfterBuzz TV and AfterBuzzTV.com. We are streaming live right now. We've got our phones by us. We're going to give you our Twitter handles in a second. So if you were watching this live on this Sunday afternoon, you can tweet us, talk Dodgers with us the whole show. If you're not watching live, you can hit subscribe on YouTube or iTunes. Watch all week. We check comments. We take tweets. So anytime all week you guys want to talk Dodgers, that's the thing to do. I keep saying we because I am Bobby DeMiro here again today, joined by Mr. Kevin John next to me. I am Mr. Kevin John, as Bobby has <laughs> said, and I love the comments as well. You can find me on Twitter, at HeyKevinJohn. Please keep all your comments, even the critical comments. We love those as well. We love everything. Bring them on. Next to her, next to him, <gasps> her. Christina Kaplan. Hello, everyone. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter, at Tina Cap. And yes, criticism. We like it. Constructive criticism, though. There you go. Uh, let's start with some constructive criticism this week. Tie a loose end on last week's show. We did the show in the afternoon. Dodgers played the night game last Sunday night. Speaking of constructive criticism, I have some for Jim Johnson. <laughs> You're terrible. Don't blow um, the game for us. That was ugly, but that's over now, and I think it underscores more than the Dodgers really struggled. It underscores the Pirates pretty damn good. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and we know that we knew that coming into this game. Yeah. It's not like the Pirates are a sleeper team. I mean, uh, and in regards to Jim Johnson, I don't know how much I blame him or blame the fact that Matty Lee should have took him out, like after, the, you know, one or two innings in. I think it was after that third when he had that catastrophic inning. But he was wild. He was hitting people, giving up runs. So, um, but at any rate, you know, I, I think this is a testament. The Pirates are a great team. Yeah. And we knew this beforehand. And obviously, that game was indicative of it right there. The funny thing is, though, we brought our bats as well. I think that same game, we, we had, what, 14, 15 hits or something like that? So it wasn't like it was a lack of batting. It was just a lack of pitching. And go ahead. I mean, we're up 5-3 to three in the eighth inning, and he gave up eight runs in the eighth inning. Yeah. And then Peralta gave up a run in the ninth. It was just, I mean... Uh, he should have been taken out. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know why he was left like, in. What, what well, about after one or two well, runs? That, see, scored? that's the interesting thing. It's the one or two is the first. After that, you leave him in because you don't want to burn another pitcher. Yeah. So it's it's his to just mess with. Um, I'm interested in those first couple. I'm surprised he's in the eighth. We talked about him a lot. Last week when you guys were gone, we talked about him a ton. The this closer struggles he has had in his career. Mm -hmm. Had one or two good years in the ninth inning and one or two very, very bad ones. That trade for the Dodgers, I still don't like it. I don't like Matt Latos. I'm not sold on on Avalon, and I really don't like Jim Johnson. We'll talk about Latos in a minute. Um, but the Pirates are good. We're going to see him again. If you make the playoffs, you're going to have to see the Pirates. It would appear yeah. that's a good ball club. Um, okay, let's go to this week then. We don't want to take too much time on that, but we did have to wrap that up. We just had up. to touch on that. Yeah, that, that's that a real bad loss. That was a WTF um, performance. <laughs> and it was a real bad real bad way to end a road tip, tr trip. Testament to the Dodgers, though. Yeah. They didn't fade after that. They had that mini four-game losing streak, mm -hmm. longest of the year. When you have a four-game losing streak and that's the longest of your season, you have first-world problems. That's a great thing to have. Those are yeah. what's called uptown problems, right? Yeah. That's a great thing to have. They lose the first one to the Nationals, come back and win the next two. Let's start with that first game. Uh, Gio Gonzalez throws a gem for Washington. Oh, yeah. this, this, to me, this whole series, this National Series, Dodgers end up going 2-1. and one. The theme is starting pitching, right? You good starter, good game, you win a ball game. Dodgers did it on the next two, Nationals did it on the first day, and that's playoff baseball. Good mm -hmm. starter, good game, you win a ball game. Bad starter, Brett Anderson wasn't bad, but he wasn't great. It's going to be tough to win a game. Well, and, oh, sorry. Well, I was just saying the Nationals, that could be a potential first round yeah. guy for us playoff, to, or yeah. uh, you know, team that we see. So it was kind of a good, I guess, test run yeah. for the playoffs to see, you know, how we match up to them. Well, you know, you also said another thing when we have good pitching uh, or when you have good pitching, or excuse me, when you have when you don't have great pitching, you need solid hitting in order to back it up. And you can't get shut out. I think they were shut out the first 8 innings or 9 before Crawford came in and hit that uh that blast, but you know, the thing is, you have to have sufficient um sufficient offense there. And I think this kind of just goes back to a testament 
um, to the Dodgers struggling with teams that are above um, that are above 500. You know, I think they're like I don't I don't know the exact um, thing, but I think they're like. I don't know. They have a losing percentage against teams that are actually above 500 winning. And I think this is, and the Nationals are right. I think they're right at 500. Or maybe now they are. Yeah. 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 They're right at 500. So, you know, it, it just goes back to that. But they did get two of the three. So, I mean, you can't really be all that concerned. But, uh, you know, I, 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 solid pitching, you can have average hitting. Not solid pitching, you need great hitting. And when you don't have any of that, then that's a recipe for uh, catastrophe. So. And we now we know about the Nationals. Sing them the end of this week, what they did in San Francisco. Sing them last week, what they did at home with Arizona and Colorado. Yeah. Nationals are in a huge funk right now. Absolutely. We didn't know that day one of the Dodgers series, so they take a game. But you end up taking two or three from a good ball club. Nationals are cold right now. The Mets are the hot team in the East. That will not last. It will flip again. The Mets <laughs> are not going to win 95 games. Um, but... Even so, you take two out of three from that. I think you got to be real happy. Game two, Zach Granke, again, you cannot ask for anything better than what he did in game two. Um, and then game three, again, with Clayton Kershaw, you cannot ask for anything better than what he did in game three. Yeah. Those All three of those games are playoff games to me because you're going to see Gio Gonzalez in the playoffs, and then Granke and Kershaw are going to do what they do. That was a preview of a playoff series mm-hmm. six yeah. weeks ahead. And yeah. that's a good idea of what you're going to get. Yeah. You know. Well, my, I'm curious what you think on this, what both of you guys think actually is, would you, because of Kershaw's struggles in the playoffs in the last couple of seasons, would you, if this were fast forward, we're first round of the playoffs, we're seeing the Nationals, would you rather start Granky on er, on three days rest versus start Kershaw early on three days rest? I would, I would, I would, I would give Granky to start, and I, I think so because just you know, it, it's really just. If you look, if you look the way that he's played all year, it's really just been indicative of how how great he has been and the fact that he's been able to set the tone. Kershaw, I understand. The last couple of seasons, he has been ridiculously bad. And it's in almost the like a chip and, on his shoulder, and you're not sure how he's gonna perform. Yeah, no, I mean, you st- you start in the second game, obviously, but still, I would start off. I would honestly start off with the person that's been consistent the whole year for us, and that's Zach Greinke. Obviously, Kershaw had a rough start this season. He's been in a pretty good groove. If you look at the last few months, or post All Star break, he's been in a great groove. But um, and that groove make that momentum may well carry on into the postseason. But if it's anything like the last couple of postseasons that you've seen him, I mean, he just had some breakdowns, and um, I would put Greinke in there just to keep the consistency going. Good question, though. I would keep the rotation. As, as consistent as you can. So if it's Granky, it's Granky. If it's Kershaw, it's Kershaw. You go with your best, and your best is both those guys, and you're paying those guys like your best. So if Kershaw screws it up again in the playoffs this year, then you cross that bridge and you come to it. But he's making so much. Granky's making so much. They've had such great outings. I don't think you purposely go short rest on Granky just to flip him on Kershaw. If you're going to give him both four or five days rest, then whatever order they come in. Yeah, right? Yeah. And then you look at matchups too. You look at what team you're playing That's against. True. If you have more righties versus more lefties, you yeah. might do Granky versus Kershaw based on splits. But at the end of the day, with those two as good as they are, playoff struggles, you know, considered for Kershaw, I think it's kind of an anomaly because the sample size is so small. Yeah. At the end of the day, I think you say, you know what, this is our best. We're going to throw it at you. And if you do to Kershaw what the Cardinals did to him last year, tip of the cap. You know, you, you're beating the best. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. We can't, We what are we going to do? We'll give you Brett Anderson in return? I mean, if you're beating <laughs> Kershaw, you're beating Kershaw, and there's nothing we can do about it. Exactly. And then the Dodgers maybe have to figure out what's going on later. Yeah. Exactly. But you got to go with your best with Kershaw. Um, him and Granke both phenomenal. The Tuesday game that the, the, the uh, Dodgers won 5 nothing. Three scoreless innings from the bullpen. Yimmy Garcia with two. Luis Avalon with another. Yimmy Garcia has been a bit of a revelation this week coming back up from AAA. Yeah. Uh, does he have your trust, or is it just another bullpen guy not named Kenley Jansen? Um, I wouldn't say that I have full trust. I, I would give my full trust in, honestly, anyone, really, in our bullpen right now. Not even Kenley or J.P. No, Howell? Can't, Kenley, yes. J.P. Howell is a little inconsistent for me. He has been lately, um, yeah. Kenley is, is probably the only steadfast guy you can really count on um, every time for the most part, but... I just, uh, our bullpen, it's just, and, and you said we're going to get to the Latos thing later. Uh, 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 it just, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard because really we have the talent. I was talking to you guys before the show. We have the talent on the rest of the team. It's just the bullpen. I mean, I, I could, you could almost say it's the worst bullpen in baseball. 
Ooh, based let's off, not. I'm not saying that's, 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 that's No, based off the supporting cast of our let's team. Let's go. Like. Let's 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 go. I mean, even look yeah. at the numbers. If we're talking about the elite teams, it's a terrible bullpen. Yeah. Uh, in baseball, that's no. What I, I mean, mean, I'm not yeah. saying obviously the, the bad bad teams, but I mean, a, of the top teams, we're we're so on the bottom with the bullpen. It's just hard. Yeah, and and, and honestly, I'm just gonna say, as a fan, there's really only one person that when they bring in. To get the save, I feel a sigh of relief. Like, you know, there's no stress. That is, and that's Jansen. And that's not to, not to take anything away from JP or anyone else, but I just feel that as far as consistency and showing consistency, Jansen has pretty much been the man. And, I, you know, that's not to say that, you know, once we get further in, 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 and get into the playoffs, that, you know, some of these other guys won't step up, but it's, it's, it's kind of difficult to, you know, it's kind of difficult to have your faith and confidence in people that have shown inconsistency. And, you know, I, I'm going to have to somewhat agree with, uh, with Tina on that, even though I don't think we have the worst bullpen mm. in the MLB. Um, but, you know, outside of Jansen, I am a little concerned. I'll say that much. Uh, J.P. Howell's been struggling a little bit lately. Chris Hatcher is back off the DL. Yeah. You going to get anything from him? Former catcher, just like Jansen, hadn't had the year we expected him to have, especially coming from Miami. Is he going to be... I don't know, a dark horse down late? Or do you just say, you know what, let's throw everything against the wall? Whatever sticks, sticks. Well, he pitched a couple innings yesterday, or was it fr- uh, what day was it? Uh, I didn't actually <laughs> see, but my brother was telling me that he looked decent. He didn't look, you know, from coming back from the DL, he looked okay. So maybe there's something there. Maybe we, I guess we just, like you said, kind of have to throw it to the wall and see if it sticks. Kind of can't really predict what's going to happen with him, but we can hope that it could be a good extra arm in there. And I think it's too premature to really make a a strong assessment on it. You know, I think, uh, you know, we have to see a little bit more, but he did look decent in the outing. And, uh, you know, like I said, it, uh, you know, through more reps, through through, through more save opportunities, we'll see, um, you know, uh, 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 what he has to show. But I'm not, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say, uh, you know, I, I feel confident and <laughs> relieved with him. You know, obviously, it's uh, I'd, I, I'd have to see a few more innings before I make my accurate assessment. One thing on Yimi Garcia, uh, 43 and two-thirds innings, he's only allowed 43 base runners, which is noteworthy, struck out 56 against nine walks. So you might be seeing a guy who becomes your eighth inning guy, mm-hmm. where Jansen's the ninth. The Dodgers haven't had a true eighth this year. They've kind of piecemealed it. Howell, Rodriguez, when he was here, they'd, pitch, they'd go matchups. Howell would face a batter. They tried to go with Hatcher. They tried to go with even Juan Nicasio at times. They really tried to go with Peralta, and that didn't work. Yeah. Uh, Yimi Garcia might be the eighth inning guy and also like he's a little bit of a length guy he'll throw two and three in an outing and sometimes you need that in a swing man and sometimes you really need that in the playoffs how mm-hmm. many playoff games you see go 11 12 innings and you need one reliever who's really going to hold it down for two or three innings versus these one inning pop and gone guys I was, I was gonna say I know this is not common with Jansen but how do you feel about Jansen doing the two innings eight? never ever 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 never and I know old school people this is why I get amped up about this no, because I old see. school old school people <laughs> The Tim McCarver's the world who baseball has passed them by. I'm sorry it has. The old school people will say, well, back in the day, you know, guys used to throw three innings a day out of the bullpen. Yeah. Well, back in the day, they weren't throwing 98 miles an hour. And back in the day, they were blown out for the next three days and they couldn't get used. Jansen, especially because he has such a defined role, yeah. I want him throwing 20 pitches every time he needs to throw. And if he ever goes out, and you see this with closers a lot, if he ever goes out and gets work and the Dodgers are losing 10 nothing, and he hasn't worked in four days and he goes and gets an inning, if he gives up a couple of hits, a couple of walks, throws about 25 pitches, they'll pull these guys. They will pull closers in the middle of innings. You'll yeah. say, wait a second, don't you want him to finish it? No, I don't care. We're already losing whatever the case is. I need him fresh for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. With Jansen, because he's so automatic for the one, you're always planning, I got to use him tomorrow. I got to use him tomorrow. I got to use him tomorrow. tomorrow. And then you mm-hmm. use him until you don't because you're losing or you're up by eight runs. Exactly. Uh, that's the one guy I want to stick to one inning. And then Howell is maybe the one guy excuse me, that I want to stick to one batter. Uh, he's a good lefty guy and has been a good lefty guy. Yeah. Everybody else, I think Yimi Garcia is maybe your extended guy, but Jansen, absolutely not until you get to like the World Series, the NLCS, the rules kind of get thrown out the window. Yeah. But up to that point, and you really got to go deep in those series to do it. Yeah. First game of the NLDS, dude's throwing an inning. Absolutely not getting extended. You're not, yeah. not extending him two innings then you're or gonna, more. You're going to lose him the next day. What happens if he goes two innings, you win the game, you look great, and then the next day you're up three to two in game two of the division series, yeah. and you got to bring in Juan Nicasio because yeah. Kenley Jansen's not available. You yeah. know, that's the risk that you run. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I totally understand what you're saying. I totally understand. It's uh, uh, You don't want to overuse him, especially yeah. when you depend on him. 
uh, day after day. I would say look at the Giants with their starter with Madison Bumgarner, but he's still having a phenomenal season despite throwing almost 300 innings last year. So shows you what I know. Um, <laughs> but I mean, with relievers, it's different relievers. And he came so... in as a reliever in the World Series exactly. too, <laughs> just just to cement his legacy. Those, so. those that's probably like the most gut wrenching moment is. At least, I mean, I can't imagine what it's like to actually be on the mound. But as a fan, I remember, like, you're, you know, it is maybe a 3-2 game in the finals or in the playoffs, and you're holding your breath yeah. every time he goes to pitch. So you want somebody that you might not have to hold your breath as much, and that's Absolutely. definitely yeah. Kenley Jansen. Yeah, no, at that yeah. time you go with your best pitcher. And that's yeah. the other thing, and the Dodgers would never do this, but this is an interesting discussion because it's kind of theoretical. Roles are so tightly defined in the bullpen now. The closer has the ninth. The setup guy has the eighth. Look at the Nationals. Papelbon has the ninth. Storin has the eighth. Yeah. No questions. Yeah. Um, the problem with that is your best reliever often is your closer. Not a lot of guys have that fireman in the middle. And your best reliever is your closer, so you only want to use them in the ninth. But sometimes the game needs to be closed in the sixth. You need a closer to come out with the bases loaded and nobody out in the sixth, and then your other good reliever, seven, eight, nine. That, yeah. Teams don't want to use their closer. Closers don't want to get used. They want saves. Their agents want numbers to yeah. send them to contracts the next stats. year. Absolutely. They want the stats. And, and baseball's slow to change, so I don't think we'll ever see a closer in the sixth. But especially in the playoffs, there's something to be said for using your best pitcher at the best situation, regardless of what inning it is. So if, if, if Jansen's your seventh inning fireman one day, is it going to happen? No. Could it happen? Should it happen? Yeah, maybe. So, so I guess to conclude that question then, Jansen definitely not a two-inning save guy. No. <laughs> um, no. And, and, and I guess Yimi of anyone would potentially be able to go, uh, obviously uh, JP not, but... Uh, Yimmy is 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 considerable for going two innings. I think so. I think he's definitely a two inning swing man. I think Nicasio was just one on the DL literally today, uh, having a decent year. I don't know if you trust Nicasio as well late. Yeah. But he's another swing man guy. Goes two three. He used to be a starter his whole career. Um, yeah. The bullpen though, I, and this is I think the thing too. And we're hard on the bullpen, and we should be hard on the bullpen, Absolutely. and you should be hard on the bullpen at home. Yeah. But another thing too to remember is, it's so fluid during the year. And so many of these guys just come in and out with injury and tra in trades, moving guys around, transactions and stuff. So it's tough to, it's almost tough to grade a bullpen for a full season because so much crap is happening. There's so much. You're at the mercy on, yeah. of the starters. You're at the mercy of how Mattingly manages. Yeah. You're at the mercy sometimes of matchups. If Mattingly believes, well, Howell's not going to face this guy. I want you, whatever. Um, and sometimes, you know, your manager may have your best interest in heart, but that doesn't mean he's always right. Yeah. So sometimes you're at the mercy of seeing the wrong guy against the wrong hitter. Exactly. It's just it's it's really more than any other part of the team. The starting pitching gets to start the game, gets to establish it. Hitters get to go through the lineup a couple times, establish it. The bullpen. You're coming into a cluster, you yeah. know, yeah. and you just have to deal with it. And I know that's their job, and they're paid well, so very that, that comes with the territory of being. <laughs> <laughs> they're paid <laughs> very the handsomely to do that. Yeah. Um, but all things considered, as bad as it's been, we almost have to remember and say, at one point, you know, is it just either a bad luck with how pitchers have left them, with how they've left each other, with runners and whatever else, and b is it Mattingly, you know? And I'm not criticizing Mattingly, saying he should be fired, but there is that school out there but is it maddingly misusing the bullpen or overusing the bullpen as crazy as it sounds with guys like Granky and Kershaw on the rotation yeah you know yeah. I mean no, that's a, that's a, it's a really good question and you know as far as far as maddingly as a manager I I personally think he's been pretty solid I know there was a lot of speculation he was going to get fired last season after that uh unceremonious loss against the uh cards but uh you know at the at, at the end of the day like you said you know there's so many different circumstances in a particular game that can dictate which player comes in at which particular game. And that's what Manning Lee's paid to manage, obviously to manage the game and all that. So, you know, I, I like I said, I was hard on Manning Lee earlier because he should have took Jim Johnson. I feel he should have took Jim Johnson out a lot of, um, you know, last, that, last Sunday night game. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, he's doing his job. They're in first in NL West. Yeah. So far, you know. Uh, I mean, they by, held by on to it for a while, though. They, it, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The last time, you know, they've been at first for, I want to say, like the last two months or something. It's at been least, a, it's, it's it's been been a, a long while. time yeah. that they've, they've yeah. held that spot. But the Giants are closing the gap. But at the end of the day, back to Manning Lee, I, I, I really don't know. I mean, I, I definitely think that... Um, you know, from what I've seen, I think that he's doing a pretty decent job managing. Sure, is there some things I would say, yeah, I don't know about that or this, yeah, but no one's perfect. Well, it's easy to manage well, though, when you got Kershaw and Granky. Right? Exactly. Um, <laughs> exactly. Wow. I mean, that's, I'm sorry. Your voice just cracks up. <laughs> you know, that's how excited he's I get about it. He's very passionate about it. Well, I mean, who, what other, if you go across the MLB, 
What two other tandem starters well, would you prefer to have? Let's other talk, than let's talk about the team you just saw. I'm not saying prefer, okay. but another manager who has another great rotation and is not doing it as well as Mattingly is Washington, Matt Williams. That yeah. rotation's phenomenal. they got a lot of problems. Yeah. They don't hit. Their bullpen's been weird. Juice Storen's kind of screwed up a couple times this last couple weeks. Um the Nationals are scuffling a lot, and they have a great rotation. Yeah. You know, you saw Jordan Zimmerman on Thursday or Wednesday, phenomenal game. Gio mm-hmm. Gonzalez threw a great game. Steven Strasburg, the uh, Dodgers didn't even see him. You know, Max Scherzer, phenomenal. So you got a really nice rotation in your 58 and 58. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're, I in, they're in somewhat of a funk right now, but like you mentioned earlier, Bobby, that could change. Yeah. And like you just said, they have a great bullpen, so... Kind of and, that's, and I think that's the thing about the Dodgers, and, and then we'll get to the Red Series, but that's, I think, the biggest thing about them with the playoffs. You don't want to be the best team. I don't think the Cardinals are clearly the best. You're probably not going to catch them unless you get really hot. But even so, who cares if you catch them? You don't want to be the best team. You want to be in position, and then anything can happen. Yeah. So, especially a seven-game series, you're not doing a one-game. Maybe they get a play-in game if the Giants overtake them for the division. Yeah. That would be problematic. But in a five-game, seven-game series, anything can happen. Absolutely. Weird stuff happens. And yeah. when you have Kershaw and Granke, if you have a seven-game series, those two can start, what, four or five games if you go on short Between rest, about, depending. Yeah. Yeah. I got to like the chances. Yeah. You know, how do you not like the chances? And if you hit Kershaw and Granke in a seven game series, yeah. tip the cap, man. You <laughs> earned it. <laughs> you hit the best. You earned it. You deserve to move on. So, um, okay, let's talk Reds. Reds are going nowhere. Uh, they have some interesting pitchers, though. Thursday, uh, Reds won 10 to 3. Matt Latos. Not so good. Uh, bad home, not a true homecoming. It wasn't in Cincinnati, but his former club, the Reds, uh, knocked him around pretty good. Seven hits, five runs, four earned, and four and two thirds. Did strike out seven. Uh, ERA is 4.81 this year. ERA doesn't tell the whole story, but the story is Matt Latos, fourth, fifth starter, or should we think about getting Mike Bolsinger back up? Uh, I honestly would go to Bolsinger. And you know I'm not I'm, I'm not giving up on, on actually I kind of am giving up on Latos but uh, <laughs> yeah no, no 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 seriously I just think I, I honestly just think that Bolsinger brings a lot more intangibles and I think that he has uh, just a lot more variety or as you should say cadence in his game and you know I another thing with with another thing with Latos too when I watch him sometimes I cringe because he seems like. He just seems like he freaks out sometimes. Like he's not in a consistent groove. And you kind of, I don't know if it's bad communication between um, him and the catcher or, or, or what's going on, but sometimes he just does not seem like he has control of the game. And uh, that's a concern of mine. But, you know, that's my opinion. I, I mean, I think Bolsinger most definitely needs to be on the roster. Um on it, I would say in Leto's spot, switch them, flip them. I mean, I would put much more faith in Bolsinger than what I've seen in Leto's. And I realized the Dodgers didn't want to give up, you know, Seager and what was our, who's our other Julio Urias. Urias. Yes. Our, yes. Our Especially not prospect. for a guy like Leto's, yeah. Well, that was the, that was what was on the table for the pri- for David Price. Or Hamels right? or somebody, theoretically, yeah. absolutely. So, and I yeah. get that they don't want to give up their young prospects. I get that, but I just, I mean, luckily we didn't really give up much for Leto's, but I just don't think that it was a very good acquisition. I I'm with also go go ahead. Yeah, no, and, and, and I was just going to piggyback off of that. You know, I, like you just stated, ERAs don't say everything, but you know, if you just look at their ERAs, Bolsinger this season two point eight three, Latos, and I know he's only had a few chances, but six point seven five. Yeah, he's and, been bad, and he was real bad in Miami too. Uh, that's only his Dodgers numbers. Um, yeah. Here's my thing with Latos. He acquired him for a reason, so they're going to go with him another couple times, unless he blows up. If he really blows up, maybe you see something. But him, Jim Johnson, you're going to see these guys keep running out there a little bit because yeah. you acquired him for a reason. Yeah. Uh, but the thing with the Dodgers, and this is kind of weird because they're a winning team and they can win right now. You know, we talk Red Sox on the other show on this network. We talk Who? about a lot of bad teams. Mm-hmm. And bad a teams bad right teams. now ought to be gearing up for 2016. And this is audition time. And this is yeah. bring yeah. up the young guys. What do you have for next exactly. year? The Dodgers are in a weird position. They can do that too with Bolsinger. He's already auditioned. He's earned a shot next yeah, spring. Absolutely. You already know what he's got. But you can bring him back up. You know what you're going to get. You're going to get five, six innings, couple runs, you know, on average. Yeah. Um, and you can almost audition him and get him ready for next year while still winning this year. And you almost come to that scales where you have to figure out, is it better to have Latos the veteran because maybe he'll turn it on? Or is it better to have Bolsinger audition him and you're using him for next year? Come playoff time, I don't know if you want to keep Bolsinger. Maybe you do. 
but he's an interesting guy who's, I think, earned enough trust and maybe deserves a shot. I just don't think he's going to get it for at least a couple other turns. Yeah. What about um, Urias? I, I heard rumors, so he just had surgery on his eye. On his eyelid, he did, because yeah. he had a tumor as a kid. Yes, yeah. and I heard rumors that the Dodgers had him get the surgery now so that he has time to rest and they might pull him up for playoffs. Do you that think that would be possible? That would be unbelievable because the kid's 20 years old. Uh, Urias is... Do you think that would be a good idea? <sighs> you know what? There's something to be said, and a lot of teams have considered it, and teams have done it before. Bring up your young studs. I believe the Blue Jays did this with Marcus Stroman. Bring up your young studs who are starters. Put them in the bullpen and let them learn yeah. in the bullpen in short stints oh, yeah. and let them throw the hell out of the ball. And Urias can throw the hell out of the ball. And I don't know if they do it with him. I almost would rather they didn't because he is, to me, almost going to be maybe Fernando Valenzuela part two. Wow. Um, he's you know a Mexican-born pitcher. Dodgers scouted him when he was 15 years old, signed him at 16. He's already in double A. Mm-hmm. Had he not had that surgery, to, to the surgery on his eyelid, which he came out of fine. He's been thrown in rehab just fine. Yeah. But had he not had that, he might be in triple A right now as exactly. a 20-year-old. So the, the time could have changed. But that guy... Uh, that guy we will talk about at the end of this year because I believe he will be in the rotation to start next season. Wow. The question is, do you then put him in the fire now? You know, yeah. you mm-hmm. could put him in the fire, he could do well, and you could have an ace next year, and that's ace number three or number two if you lose Granky. Yeah. You could put him in the fire and he could struggle, and next year his development slows down. Now, so, I, I mean, honestly, and, and this is the thing with pitchers, you, you don't want to throw them in. You, you, you need them to take time to develop. You don't want to prematurely throw them in, but there is. I wouldn't mind if they threw them into the fire. Well, and there's guys, there's <laughs> development guys who are great prospects, and then there's once in a generation prospects. Yeah. And the question is, is Urias the great prospect or the once in a generation? Because if he is truly the once in a generation, throw him in. If yeah. you feel he's ready, throw him in. Let's yeah. see what he can do. Because his stuff, his makeup, dude's 20 pitched against 24 year olds in Double A. Exactly. Come on, you know he's not far off. Yeah. So. I mean, let's say you go into the playoffs and with, like we've been talking about this whole time, the lack of depth in the bullpen, the lack of, you know, consistency, who knows? Maybe you do throw him into the fire and like you said, he plays amazing, he throws amazing and win, helps you win a game or, you know, get to that ninth mm-hmm. inning and have Jansen come in and save it for us. You know, I feel like that might be a good idea. <laughs> That's a better option than throwing Jim Johnson in there. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, he, he will not do worse than Jim Johnson. Than no, Jim Johnson. And, and he's got length like Garcia, and even more than Garcia because because Urias is starting. He's got length; he can go four innings. And yeah. Yimi, actually, I don't know if you mentioned it earlier. His last three appearances, he hasn't given up a run. Yeah. 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 So, so short, small sample size, but yes. building trust. Yes. Uh, Urias, I feel like we're getting excited about something that will never happen. But it certainly right. must be on the table exactly. in Andrew Friedman's office to say, even just ask a question. Hey, what do you think about this? Exactly. Probably shot down real quick, so whatever. But it's hell, it's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say that. I don't think it's outlandish or too far off to predict that happening. Yeah. You know. Um, and, he, and we will certainly be talking about him next year, without a doubt. Yes. Uh, okay, so let's talk Friday, Latos. Eh, not so good. Uh, bullpen blew up a little bit again. Avalon and Baez allowed a couple innings after Latos. Um, Friday against the Reds, Dodgers win 5-3. Alex Wood, 6 and a third, 5 hits, 3 runs, 3 walks, 3 strikeouts. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what a 4th and 5th starter is supposed <laughs> to do. Right? You know, you're in a game, keep it close, you get a couple more runs, you win the ball game, congratulations. Go about six, give up about three. I can't complain about that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I, I 100% agree. I mean, obviously, they're supposed to come in. They're not supposed to try to win it, but just sustain everything where it's at. And, you know, they're extremely solid. And I know I, I know a lot. we've been talking a, a lot about the pitching, obviously, because once you get into the postseason, that's what truly matters. But I just want to say, I think – Offensively, the Dodgers have really been pretty solid. They have Puig, um, Puig's coming back. Yeah, absolutely. Puig's yeah, coming, and, and and you know, even these last, even when they got blew out um, on Thursday against uh, uh, the Reds, I did still see some, uh, you know, some, somewhat of, of some sparks offensively. So you know, I think that it's good that uh, we're putting the emphasis on the pitching right now because that's what's going to sustain you, especially in the playoffs. But um, I, I don't want us to lose track of the fact that the bats have been swinging as well pretty yeah. good. So, And we'll talk about bats in question, but that is a good point because yeah. we do need to talk about Puig. we got to give him his due. Uh, real Puig. quick, <laughs> Saturday's game, Dodgers win 8-3. Anderson does what Alex Wood did. Six innings, three runs, move it along. Dodgers yeah. have four home runs on Saturday, uh, all solo, I believe. 
Um, but hey, four home runs is four home runs. This yeah. club, this club hits it out of the park. Um, yeah. and they're coming around. Sunday now, the game that just ended two to one, Dodgers. Uh, Dodgers wins. Zach Greinke wins his thirteenth. Zach Greinke also hits the game-winning home run yeah. in the yeah. fifth inning. And back-to-back exactly. action. Back-to-back with Jock. With Jock. Uh, that guy, Anthony DiSclefani for the Reds, can throw the ball. Um, that's yeah. He's going to be a real nice pitcher. But the Dodgers yeah. did enough. They got to him. DiSclefani yeah. is a young guy who could be a playoff pitcher on a good team, right? Mm-hmm. So that's another – it's not a playoff team. The Reds are not as good. But it's a test. A good young yeah. guy like that. And the Dodgers did what they had to do. They did enough. Mm-hmm. So that's a decent win. On the on the week, they go 5-2. and two. Can't hate that. Not bad. No, yeah. <laughs> you cannot not hate going five and two. A yeah. uh, couple quick questions for you guys. And by quick, I mean we're going to take about 20 minutes. Uh, first things first, Yasmani Grandal's shoulder. He is day-to-day, and the catchers have stopped hitting. In the last seven entering Sunday, Grandal and A.J. Ellis are four for 23, five strikeouts, just two RBIs. Are you worried about offense from the catching position because Grandal's been so good, or do you just need them back there to work with pitchers? Um, I'm worried. And, you know, I'll say that. I know A.J. Ellis is obviously the veteran. And I know that he's good with working with pictures. You know, we, we've seen him defensively in the past. His hitting is atrocious. Yeah. I mean, I, I've never really, since he's been with the Dodgers, I haven't really been impressed with his hitting. Um, he's, he's, he's one of those guys that, you know, maybe any particular game he can give you maybe one for four, an RBI double or something. But... I'm really concerned with that because you you really need all your bats heading in. I mean, you just can't be – you can't have anyone on the roster that you're like, okay, that's just a throwaway for the, you know, the upcoming person. So as far as hitting is concerned, yes, I'm 100% um, concerned with, uh, with Ellis particularly. And on the road, you need everybody you can get, right? You struggle on the road to hit sometimes. I will say this about A.J. Ellis. He's hitting 210 this year. He gets on base at a 325 clip. Jock does this too. Dodgers have a lot of guys who walk. They lead the National League in walks. So even if they're not getting hits, a lot of them are still getting on base a lot yeah. better than we think, which is still a good thing. And Adrian Gonzalez uh-huh. is going to drive him in. Adrian Gonzalez, yeah. Ethier, those guys are going to do what yeah. they do. So I'm with yeah. you on that. This is a bad week. I'm more worried about Grandal's shoulder. If he's not okay, A.J. Ellis is no longer and really kind of never was an everyday catcher. So exactly. Grandal's loss is is the Dodgers' loss if he has to miss serious time. I hope Absolutely. he doesn't go on the DL. Uh, but that's a serious thing if they lose him. He's an all-star this year. Uh, speaking of DL, one who came off the DL won Justin Turner. Scale, scale of 1 to 10, the only acceptable answer is 100. How glad are you Justin Turner is back? Oh, my God. I can't even put it into words. The answer is 100. <laughs> 100. 100. <laughs> no, the answer is 110, okay? Yes. I mean, if you're not happy that he's back, then you're not a true Dodger fan. You, you haven't been paying attention way. for the last four yeah. months. Uh, no, thank goodness. Um, so that MRSA thing was more serious than we thought it was. It, Weird. It was... No, I thought it was... Um, what, I had it wrote, wrote it was down. MRSA, right? What? Was yeah. it MRSA, the infection he had? Staph Wasn't infection. Staph, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Those, can, those can be very serious sometimes. Those are nasty. It seems like that's yeah. what it was with him. Yeah, the, I mean, I went to the damn hospital. highly contagious, too. Yeah. That's why. That's a weird, yeah. those aren't, ugh. But he's back now. He's still, you know. Yeah. I, I would joke I and say him. he's still alive, but those things kill people. Yeah. They legitimately do. So yeah. that's, whew. Well, well, we're happy he's alive yeah. and well. <laughs> and also, you know, there's an energy that he brings to this lineup, too. And, you know, and, and you see it on the lineup. When you're at the games, you see the fans love this he's guy. He's fiery, no pun intended. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that fiery orange hair, I'm telling you. Those locks. I think him and uh, Granky are having a contest. You can grow the hair the longest. But uh, <laughs> at any rate, you know, uh, obviously b- glad to see him back in there. Been a very, he's been very solid and consistent for the most part. But, yeah. uh, as he comes, so goes Howie Kendrick. Hamstring strain sends him to the DL. Not good. Yeah. Not good. And the thing about Howie is that, you know, I, I do want to say this, and this may be a little controversial because I know that, you know, he's had up and downs this season. But Be careful I, because Jared loves Howie. So be careful what you say. I wanna, Actually, no, no, this was actually going to be in defense of okay. Howie. You know, I was, I was going to say something good. I feel that Howie has actually been pretty clutch for us. When I say clutch in the later innings, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, I can't, I, I don't know how many walk-offs he has on the year, but I know it is multiple. And, you know, he's he, he's really just brought in that seasoned veteranship to um, to our team. So I, I really like him in the later innings. You know, he's he, he's been there before. He's played a long time. And, you know, I, he, he, he's clutch. So uh, I, I, I'm a little hurt that obviously he'll, you know, he's going back to the DL, but, you know, at the end, at the end of the day, we, uh, you know, we, we have other people that can step up in his absence, so I'm not too concerned. 
I mean, it's a tad worrisome because hamstrings are always a difficult injury. Whether, I mean, strained, okay, yes, that's not too serious, but it can quickly go so serious, and then we lose him for 30 days or, God forbid, the whole season, the rest of the season. Well, yeah, and 30 days now is almost the season. That's the issue. Right, pretty much. So definitely worrisome. I guess we'll have to wait and see how he does after these 15 days. Hopefully it's just a quick rehab but it wasn't for Puig that's the other yeah. thing it yeah. lingered for Puig uh, earlier right. this wow. year hamstrings so. are I think one of the worst Absolutely. injuries in sports to, yeah. to get better and to uh, you know recover from and, and in baseball it specifically it's to start and stop yep. you don't do anything and then, and then you move very quickly for four seconds exactly. yeah. that's the scary absolutely uh okay. we'll have them back by the world series talking <laughs> that's optimistic <laughs> talking talking scary uh let's talk jock yes what the hell's going on? I know what's going on. I will talk about it in a minute, but what do you guys think is going on? Do we worry about Jock, or is it just, hey, this is a rookie, and we got to play around Can it? Can I give a scenario that I think maybe would yes. be helpful? Oh, God, I know what you're going to say, but go uh, for it. Well, first of all, I, I learned a new term today, um, the mini Mendoza line. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jock is hovering over the Mendoza line. Yep, Jimmy was there um, for a while. Jock's there now, yep. Yes, and what do you guys think about possibly – inputting inserting Carl Crawford and sitting Jock for a couple games letting him maybe compose himself get his mind right and give him a little time that is not the scenario I thought you were gonna say I am a hundred percent with you on this one I thought you were gonna option him and I thought he was gonna go to OKC for a couple weeks uh, which would which bring up an interesting um, set of problems but no, I think you should absolutely sit him. I think you start platooning yeah, cause, him. And because uh, Crawford has been hot since he's been off the DL. So, yeah. okay, give him a little time to sit down and cool off so that, you know, he can maybe figure it out before the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like this, guys. The kid's a rookie. <laughs> yeah. All right? He's a rookie. I understand the expectation. I understand everyone wants him to be this incredible, you know, force that he will be later on. I understand we gave up sit Matt Kemp for him. I understand he is the future, but at the end of the day, he's still a rookie and he's still going to look like a rookie at times, despite the fact that he has ridiculous power, despite the fact that he sometimes can do things that are ridiculously, you know, talented. I still think that, and I'm not saying cut him, cut him slack, like, oh, he's a rookie, it's okay, jock, you know, pat him, it's fine, fine. No, obviously, yeah, if we have to sit him a few games, do that, but I don't think we should push the panic button or freak out. We still know what he's capable of doing. And I think right now, it's really all, like Vince Scully said earlier, it's really, I think a lot of it's mental with him. Yeah. And I think he's, he's in his head, and um, which is another beneficial reason to, to sit him for a little while for him to clear that. But at the end of the day, we know what he can do. He's a rookie. He'll settle down and come playoffs. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Jock had a little surge there. And uh, he hit a home run today. So He did hit a home run today. I will play devil's advocate for a couple reasons. I, I agree with you mostly, but I'll play devil's advocate. Please. If he were on a losing team out of the play, if you're on the Phillies hitting 215, cold as hell for the last two months, you're right. He's a rookie. Let him play through it. This team has expectations, and you gave him this job for a reason. And if he doesn't perform, this is baseball. It's a business. You got to give somebody else the job. Yeah. I'm not saying you bench him. I'm not saying you yeah. set him down. I think you set him down August 15th, 16th. You're sending a, the wrong message. But you got to figure out an exit strategy, and it is Ethier and Crawford, 100, percent and maybe yeah. Scott Van Slyke as a righty. Um, here's the thing about Jock, and I looked at this a long time ago, and <sighs> he is he strikes out 30 percent of the time. He makes less hard contact now than he has been. There's a great piece on Dodgers.com about this. Um, but he has no margin of error. When you strike out 30% of the time, everything is magnified when you start to slump the other 70, and you yes. have no margin of error. And because you can't just put the ball in play and get base hits at the same rate that other guys do because you strike out so much. Yeah. But Jock came up at such offensive-friendly minor league parks. And yeah. every oh, year, killing it padded his stats. Triple-A Albuquerque, yeah. high-A in Rancho Cucamonga, rookie ball, every way through except the Midwest League and Great Lakes in full season A is a hitter's park or in double-A had a short porch and right form in Chattanooga. Miners don't always translate to majors, obviously, but that matters only because his stats have been getting padded, and I'm worried that we oversell this guy. Great player, phenomenal, going to be a great guy, but coming out of the PCL as a 30-30 guy for the first time in eight decades, well, he's in Albuquerque. It's not that hard to hit 30 yeah. home runs there versus yeah. going to Iowa and the Cubs triple-A or going to Nashville and the A's triple-A. Mm-hmm. Um, 
that's just a little thing. It's not what's struggling with him now, but just a little thing about him we need to worry about. But it's a rookie situation. I say you keep giving him bats if you can. I think when you sit him, then he gets in his own head more, and I'd like that's to see him see pitchers. Exactly. But at what point does his at-bats hurt the team? Didn't today. hit a home run today. But at what point do his at-bats hurt the team so much that you have to sit him? Because we're there. We're almost there. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you raise a very good point there. You know, obviously, yeah, you know, you, you want to give him lead way. You want to say, okay, he's a rookie. We'll, we'll allow him, but... When it starts to become detrimental to your team winning ball games, then yeah, and, and and that's where I agree with Tina on. Look, you know, you you we have veterans like Crawford, and you know, um, Ethier guys that can come in, and not to say that they're the end all be all, but yeah. you know, we, we that we feel more comfortable with down the stretch. Shall Jock continue to struggle immensely? So you know, yeah, if if we have to send him out a couple of games, that's that's perfectly fine. I think personally that would be bad because if anything, he'll be in his head more while he's sitting. I would like to just see him break through this, but uh, I don't know. It's, it's it's a very good it's a very very good point. I mean, I. Um, I will say in Jock's ask, favor. Ask Manningly. You know. <laughs> I will say in Jock's favor, last seven games, he's walked seven times. Yeah. Slump or not, he's still getting on base. Exactly. 74 this year. 74 walks is insane for a rookie to have that much plate discipline. The other thing about Jock, we've hypothesized that the home run derby has affected him, and it could have, but in the since the month before the home run derby, June 15th, he is hitting 192. Yeah. He's been bad for a nice. long time. Uh, yeah. Moving on Wait, to... First, before you move on, yes. we, have yeah. to, we have to give a tip of the hat to our my boy Matt Kemp who hit the Padres first ever cycle. cycle. Well, yeah. because it happened against the Rockies, I got something to say about that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh oh. I don't. I don't celebrate cycles as much. Only it's cool, but only because it is so much up to chance. You got to have the power to hit a home run. That's great. Triples. Did you see this game? Triples. Weird stuff has to happen. Yeah. He hit a ball off the wall that went straight up and out. Yeah. So you need the center fielder to go all the way back and then have to chase it all the way forward at the deepest part of the park in a huge ballpark. Yeah. That's the only way you hit a triple there when you're Matt Kemp. So you need weird stuff to happen. The weirdest thing and most notable thing about this is it's the first cycle in Padres history. I know. I I thought that was crazy. I'm shocked Tony Gwynn didn't get one. You know? Well, yeah. I mean, true. You don't think he could put a bunch of singles together with a home run at some point? <laughs> he wasn't a home run hitter, but one day. Yeah. Um, that's a you great know? point with Tony Gwynn. Uh, okay, Matt Kemp, I see you working. i got to yeah. defend the Rockies. So. A <laughs> um, couple more. Carl Crawford we touched on. I absolutely think Double. he should get more platoon time. He's 9 for 15 this week with two uh, double and a homer. Um, and last question for you guys. Enrique Hernandez, how much do you love him? I mean, don't all jump in at once. I love this guy. He's, he's another great. platoon he guy. He can pretty much do play any position, yeah. and he's young. Yeah, athletic, which and, is exactly uh, what we need. And with, <laughs> with Jock struggling, with Crawford, maybe he's not going to turn out the way he has this last week. With Howie Kendrick on the DL, with Turner hopefully healthy, but you never yeah. know. Hey, Enrique Hernandez, we like flexibility in the National League. You got to have that guy on your bench. That's what yeah. I was going to say. Enrique Hernandez definitely gets my vote for Dodgers Utility Player of the Year. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, somebody. That you could pretty much you could throw him on the mound. You throw him in the bullpen <laughs> for the Dodgers. And you know, Why not? You know, seriously. <laughs> it's a shot. I mean, he <laughs> might be able to do better than what we've got now. Exactly. But no, to answer your question, yeah, I definitely love him. Love what he brings to the team, and just love his uh, versatility. Um, couple quick notes: Carlos Frias back on the DL. That ain't good. Um, but again, I mean. How valuable is he as a starter? We complained about him a month ago. Yeah. Dodgers will get next week uh, at Oakland for two games. They're going to get a couple days off. Monday's off, Thursday's off. At Oakland for two games, Tuesday and Wednesday. At Houston for three, Friday, mm. Saturday, and Sunday. You wouldn't see the Astros again until the World Series, hypothetically, but you were talking about one of the primo playoff teams in baseball right now. Uh, they're no Mets, but, but they're, they're pretty rolling. damn good. Yeah. And they pitch very well. So this yeah. is going to be interesting for the Dodgers. They cut, Then they go to on the road to Cincinnati. And then a couple weeks from now, we're going to have a big show because Cubs and Giants are coming to town on the next homestand. Mm. Get and, ready. And we've seen them struggle with them. Oh, Get ready. Seen them. Uh, 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 That's a scary thought. It, it, it's scary, <laughs> but you know what? I, honestly, the, the only way to get through it, I actually love to see them. Uh, facing SF right now, you know. They, yeah. Seriously, the, the only way to get through it is to continue fighting them. And I think this year so far, their 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 record against San Francisco is what like one and eight or something. Something I, bad. It's, it's bad. But yeah. I, honestly, 
I think they're going to regroup. They already know what to expect this time. And I mean, this could just be optimism coming as a fan. Who knows? They can go out there and get swept in the series again, but I'm not going to speak that into existence. But I still like that because these are challenges that they're going to need and tests that they're going to need, especially going into the postseason. Well, I don't care if they get swept in the regular season. It's the postseason that counts. If we see them in the postseason, we are not getting swept. You got to get there first. <laughs> yes, this yes, is, this yes. is This is where it gets yeah, scary. I, um, I'm with you 100%. I think the players are too in the sense that if you're talking about going head to head with a team for the division yeah. you want to play them Absolutely. And, and the yeah. same deal as Kershaw we've been talking about in the playoffs if they beat you tip the cap mm. you earned it you have to come through us so we can we can sit here and scoreboard watch and say hey crap San Francisco swept Washington that's bad well sure we can scoreboard watch all day but when you play them you can pick up a full game every time you win exactly. that's the ultimate there uh one thing, though, <laughs> you better pick up the full games because if the Dodgers don't win this division, there's a legitimate chance they will not make the playoffs. Those two wild cards in the Central, the Pirates and the Cubs, are pretty damn good. Yeah. yeah so yeah. You, it, it's going to get the Dodgers have kind of not coasted, but they've been relatively in control for most of the year. Yeah. That can change in a hurry. And Absolutely. it can change real bad. We can go from sitting here saying, hey, when we get to the playoffs, we're going to talk about this on the show to October 1st saying, See you guys next year. You know, I mean, it can happen real fast, and no. that's the danger. No. So, um, you know, I'm not one of those Oprah secret speaking into existence. Whatever, man, I'll talk about it because I don't think it's going to happen. But I think we need to be realistic. Yeah, yeah no, I agree. I 100% agree. And, uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, and, and, no, uh, I'm just going to say, yeah, I, I definitely affirm that statement. Did I, mean, I fluster just, you? you? You did. You did, absolutely. <laughs> you flustered me. Um, last takeaways, big points for you guys. What are you looking forward to this week with the Dodgers? I just want to see more production from the bullpen, see if maybe there's somebody else that steps up that we can believe in a little bit more. You know, I mean, I'm not really sure who's going to be. Do you know who are the who are the starters? Uh, well, Kershaw, I was just looking that up. Kershaw is going to go on Tuesday. I believe that means, uh, let me see, that means Brett Anderson is going to, excuse me, that probably means Matt Latos is going to go Wednesday. Okay, okay, so let's see what Latos does. Um, you know, like we said earlier, it's a small sample size of what he's done for the Dodgers so far. So I'm interested to see how this next start goes for him. Mm -hmm. um, uh, hoping better, yeah. but we'll see. Yeah. Um, in addition, you know, I, I would say the bullpen as well as far as we're looking. But, you know, this week, I'm honestly, I'm looking at, I'm, I'm really looking for my boy Jock to get back in his groove. I would love to see him. You know, uh, uh, start making better contact, start making better decisions. I mean, his his play discipline has been pretty good, but um, I would just I would just like to see him, you know, getting more hits and getting out of his head more and um, getting the ball onto the field more, or out of the park more. You know, so um, that's really what I'm looking for. And you know, uh, who else? Uh, I'm also looking for Howie to hurry up and get off the DL as well. Hopefully, this is a good week of. Uh, rehabilitating mm -hmm. um, yes. and uh, yeah you know more excitement I, I will say too I like the two game American League Interleague only because it lets you set up off days so yeah. the bullpen is going to get an off day Monday they're essentially probably going to get an off day Tuesday too with Kershaw going yeah. so and with another off day Thursday, three out of four easy days and yeah. Latos whatever on Wednesday. So you set up that bullpen for the next couple of weeks. Uh, I will say this. We are very critical about the Dodgers because we go in very, very deeply. They're 67 and 51. They went five and two this week. We're bitching a lot. I think it's all legit. We're not ticky tack. <laughs> yeah, but let's look at the big picture too. Five and two on a week. Very pretty damn good. good. I'll take you it. Know, pretty damn good. Uh, Christina, yeah. if they wanted to tweet you, where could they find you? You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at Tina Cap. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at Hey Kevin John. And I'm on Twitter at Bobby D. Muro. That's it this week on Dodgers Wrap 360, guys. We'll see you in another seven days. we got a guest coming in next week. I won't tease that yet. We'll leave it as a surprise. It's Woo! a good one, though. And we're going to talk more Dodgers seven days from now. Uh, Oakland and Houston, so stick with us for that right here on AfterBuzz. Have a great week. He's out. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Uh, see, you see you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only. do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.